Let's start by we have a Docker registry, which is a public container that it has many images. And this could, of course, be public or private, but it's usually on the internet. And example of that, Docker Hub. So I start by pulling an image from the Docker registry. So I just get an image. Now I have the image on my computer, which is again, it's just a file system that exists on my computer. And of course, on my computer, Docker is installed, the Docker engine. Then I start using Docker to run this image. Then I will have a container running inside the Docker instance or Docker engine. So I start working with that so I can start, stop this container. The same concept as the, the virtual machine. I mean, for start, stop, restart. Also, I can start adding or changing in this container. So for example, I can create files, I can create directory, copy file, and this is usually it will be, I will start install a web server on uh, the container, then copy my web application to the web server and so on. So let's think that we start by installing a web server on the container. Once I did that, I start committing the change so I can have a new image. And it's very important to commit because if I forget to commit, then I will lose a change. So if I stop the container and start again, I will lose any changes if I didn't commit the change. So once I commit the changes, I have a new layer. And so this will not be on the same image. It will be another image and only with the delta between the original image and the new changes. And this is the beauty of Docker containers because this makes the, dif the difference is very few or very small, which can be very quickly transferred over the network and the internet. And at the same time, I tag this change so I can distinguish this, is, uh, this image from other images. Once I tag that, I start pushing to the Docker registry so I can save it, so I can, you know, get this later. So now I have it, and this is the life cycle once I want to add more changes to the container. Just adding one layer, commit that changes with a tag and push to the registry. Add another layer or a change and tag and so on. When we're talking about Docker file, Docker file is the way that I present all my in a structure inside a file. So I can work with Docker in, in two modes, the interactive mode, which is from the command line or the silent mode where I put all my instructions inside a Docker file, which will be used Docker build to build this image. Also, I can use save with backup tar so I can make like a snapshot of the image at any time and I can load that if I want to um, making like snapshot and load this snapshot while I'm working on the image. Of course, this is during the container from the container. Let's look at the Docker file. As we can see, this is the Docker file. The instruction how we build a Docker image. It looks very similar to the native command, so it will not make any difficult for you. So if you understand the interactive mode well, then you can very easily type the Docker file command. Each Docker file command create a new layer. So once you put it, it executed separately as a one layer. Docker bridge network. It's very important to understand how we, we expose and make a bridge network and port mapping. So by default, when the port is exposed, this port will be exposed within the hosting machine. For example, if I have a container and I open port 80, for example, this port 80 will not be exposed to the public unless I, I making a bridge between this port and other port. In the demo, I will show you how to deploy a web server and expose this port and making this bridge. All the commands that I will use in the demo, it will be here and I will leave them in the description of the video. I just created an Ubuntu machine on the cloud, uh, version 16.04, and I will connect it remotely using SSH from the Git patch. This is H, username, and here to confirm, yes, and type the password. 
now I am connecting and if I type sudo it will show me the switches which means that everything is complete I will start by command docker to see what will happen if I type docker this will show me that docker is not installed they, they don't understand docker even they give me some tips it tells me that I can use sudo apt install docker so let's using that without sudo install docker.io so when I try that we will find that because I, I didn't use sudo so I don't have the enough permission to install that so first let's talk about two points here the first point is sudo which is mean super user do and this is the root user and this to get the permission needed to run with with the root user so I need to put sudo with every command this is for people that are not familiar with with Linux environment the second point is using apt so what is apt apt is a package management for Linux so what is the meaning of the package management package management it's just a public repository that has different application and then I can just using a command line I can download and install the package for example operating system we have apt for Ubuntu and Linux when we using Red Hat Fedora we will using yum and when we using Windows we will using chocolatey and for software development we have different package management as well the same concept like NuGet for .NET development, NPM for Node Package Management for JavaScript development, and many others as well. Let's get back to sudo. So for permission, it's either I go for the root, and in this way, I don't need to write sudo with each command, but this is not recommended because I could accidentally remove or create any problems, and it's better to run sudo with each command. So by typing sudo bash enter now I am in the root user and I don't need to type sudo anymore with any command but this is not recommended as I explained so it's better to exit from the root user and instead using sudo with each command I still need another thing to be able to install docker I need to update the package management and this update because if I try to install docker now it will not be installed successfully the main idea here is to update the package management software or it could be update the package management source which will be where is the public repositories that this package management software using to search for the software to give you that example so you can if I type sudo nano this is for editing and open the package management source list which is list all the sources here where is the sources so I can add manually or run the update which will updating the source or updating the package management uh, version software so I will run the package man management update sudo apt update so this will update the package management it's either the software or the source then I will type sudo apt install docker dot io confirm and then the docker will be installed so this is the correct steps to install docker on Ubuntu 16 so now docker is installed if I type now sudo docker then we can see all the switches it's very easily to remove or uninstall docker and to show you that all what I just need to type sudo apt remove docker dot io confirm and then this will remove docker so now we understand how we install and uninstall docker and all the prerequisites let's now install again now it's completed the first step is to list all the images that exist on the current machine all the docker images so I will type sudo docker images this will give me the list it's not very clear let's clear the screen type again images so we can see we don't have any images on the current machine so what we will do we will just go for docker hub 
which is a public repository but this repository for the images not for the software this time so docker hub is a registry and searching for we can see here different images i can so if we go for nginx for example this is an example and we can see this is a command so if i type sudo docker pool and the name of the images which is nginx then this will as we can see it's pulling that image from the docker hub or docker registry let's see the images now on the machine sudo docker images we can see now we have one image in the same way i can just pull the images that i would like to work with so just to get back to the images search for the image that i like to pull and then with the same way to pull it so now let's try to see the running container by typing sudo docker ps process so we can see now we don't have any running container and this is very good example to understand the difference between uh, image and container so we have one image but we don't have a container because as we explained the image is like a class and the container like an object so i can have running multiple container from the same image so let's run a container from our nginx image clear the screen first sudo docker run nginx so now i run the container i am i am now inside the container so let's open another git bash and connect so we can see the, this container from outside from the machine so if i get back here and then copy this again type the password so now i connect sudo docker ps so now we can see that i have one running container so let's open another git bash to run another container let's connect first type the password sudo docker run nginx so now i am inside the second container and if i run process again we can see that i have two containers running and if we look we can see even the time created the status for example this the second container this is the first container and i can see the container id if i want to stop so let's see the process in more details if i type sudo ps3 which is a, a utility in linux then we can see that the docker container running a two process two different process for each container which is the two containers this is in details let's clear that let's stop a container but let's list the process first the container and i will copy the container id let's copy that one so we can stop this container id now sudo docker stop and paste this container id now i stop that so if i want to list again the running container we can see that i only have now one container and if we get back to this we can see that we get out of the container because it is forcefully stopped but we're still here inside the container if i type sudo docker we have many switches as we can see so for example if we go for the commit we can see the description create a new image from a container because remember if you have any changes on the container and you don't commit a new image or commit this changes it will not be saved so if you stop the container and run the container again it will lose all the changes so i have to commit and create an image in order to save this of course i can use a snapshot but this is another point so we have the commit we have also like uh, a copy 
to copy files to the container we can have uh, pause so I can pause the container I pull which we using push to push the images restart so we have different commands and utilities that we can use with docker which is as you can see it's very easy let's move to how we can have a container that running uh, a web application a very small web application and also how we can expose a, a port so we can access this web application so let's first go for the our machine and open the port 8080 because this will be the public port that will be open to the public and then from here I will type sudo docker pool this is a new image which has a web application with a hello world HTML page so I will put this image let's see the images now sudo docker images as you can see I have two images now so let's run the hello world So now I'm inside the container of the hello world. Let's open another git patch to connect. So we can see the container from outside. This is the password clear sudo docker ps. So we can see that the container now and we can see that the port 80 because this is uh, this image is has a web server and it opens port 80 but this port opened internally for the machine but for for the public port it's 8080 so if i try to access 80 it will not give me the option but since i i have this rule now on the network is that i expose 8080 this will route me to my port and the web application let's see that if i took this the ip of the machine and write 80 so this will not load because we didn't map 8080 to 80 port so what we need now is to running the container and routing this port inside the container config the configuration of the routing and this is exactly what I'm going to show you so what we need now is first I will exit the container by control C clear and then running the container so if we run now we can see that the container stopped and then running the container but in this time I will routing the port 8080 to be 80 so this is routing rule for the container so now the container is listening and as you can see it's automatically routing in the background and we can see here that the port is pointing to the rule and in the background we can see that the web page is loading as we can see so this is a hello world from a web application with HTML inside a container running inside a container so, so let's see how we can run the container in interactive mode so I can run uh, and execute command inside the container so if I say here sudo docker run dash i interactive t the name of my image and the application or the pass i want to run with so this will run in an interactive mode in this pass so let's see here the running container so if i come here sudo docker ps we can see now that this is the running container so let's here install some application for example if I start using nano we can see it's not found so I can install it and I can apt git update so now I am updating the package management apt and apt git install nano so now this will install nano if let's clear if I say now nano now we can see we have nano the editor let's close that and let's install another application like apache apt.git uh, install 
Apache 2. So this will install Apache. So as we can see now, all this changes inside the, the container itself, not inside the host application, uh, the host machine. Now it's completed. And again, I can start now navigating to, for example, using nano, like if I say nano, and then here uh, it will be um, var w html. So this will open this directory. Let's create a file there. So I will use the same here, mradwan.html. So my file and here, hello from Muhammad. Then close and save. So as we can see, this is the pause. And once I export, I can access that from the Apache server and so on. So let's see how we can copy a file from the hosted machine to the container. So first I will run a container. So do docker run interactive and with the PHP and the application is pin on bash. So now it's running. Let's see. So do docker ps and here this is the container ID. So let me hear first abt get update abt get install nano. So if I say here nano and var HTML on my file.txt. We can see that we don't have this file. Let's create this file. If I say let's here, I will create a new file sudo nano hello from Muhammad and I will save this file name file my file.txt now the file saved and then I will copy this file to the container sudo docker cp then the file to the pass which in my case in the same directory I am in now so I will give my file.txt then the pass the container ID first colon and then the pass which is in my case it will be var w html on my file.txt before enter let's get here again let's clear that so here the file nothing just come here copy the file and then here again to copy the file and we can see that the file has been copied to the container so let's do one more thing which is uh, doing what we did but using the docker file and the build an image uh, so first let's list all the files so as you can see here I have my file.txt so what I will do is sudo nano and I will start writing a docker file so very simple just php this is my image then here I will say copy to copy my file in, in this case it will be my file.txt I don't have to give it pause because it is in the current directory so I wanted to copy on var www tml on my file.txt so this is the docker file just like that and I will save the yes and I will name the file docker file So if I listed the file again, we can see that we have now docker file saved here. 
let's look at the current image sudo docker images so as we can see we don't have any emerald one image so here now I sudo docker then build this is to build an image then t the image name emerald one image and then I will give here the path of the file I can use dot to to mean the current folder which will look at the docker file so dot so now it's if I say sudo docker images sorry typo clear sudo docker images so as we can see now we have emerald one also I can get the current path using echo and environment variable so as we can see the current path is home emerald one if you would like to know the current path anyway now I have emerald one image so what I'm going to do here is going here and run this image so now I'm going to run my image sudo docker run dash i dash t emrod1 dash image bin on bash because I want to run with bin bash now if I list let's list the file here but here on the root so if I list now on var We can see that I have my file that takes in the running image because I I managed to create an image with the copied and copied the file to it. So when I run a new container, it will has this file.